I rise in support of this budget, and I want to thank the Budget Committee Chair for his amazing work, not only in crafting this budget, but the last several budgets. And this budget is really in stark contrast to the budgets of the last several years. The very difficult decisions that the majority party in this House has made over the last several years have taken us from the depths of the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression to a year where we actually have reserves and a year where we can begin the process of reinvestment consistent with the aspirations of the people of our state. One of my colleagues on the other side said we have similar goals, but we have different prisms through which we view these discussions, and I think he's absolutely right. When you look at the way in which the majority party has approached this, we have outlined a blueprint for responsible budgeting with three core principles. First, maintaining fiscal, fiscal discipline. Second, investing in the middle class. And third, creating efficiencies and effectiveness in the operation of government. And this budget does that. When you look at what has been offered by the other party, you see an approach to the budget that starts with hollow rhetoric and ends with a call for a no vote. And never does it stop to actually consider the responsibility of governing. It is easy to stand on this floor and ask for a no vote. That is not governing. Governing is the act of engaging in a fundamental conversation about the choices before us, about the revenues that we have and the smartest way to invest them in the interest of our state. To hear my colleagues get up and embrace funds that they opposed and then suggest that they have a different approach really is laughable. It is absolutely laughable. To talk about the question of investment of education without talking about the fact that this budget pays back over $2 billion in deferrals that started under a Republican administration, let's be clear, and the wall of debt that was grown to its greatest level under that same administration. The beginning of responsible budgeting in this state came when we moved to a simple majority consistent with 47 other states to pass a budget, and when we elected a governor who was not afraid to govern. Over the last three years, the majority party in this House, in the Senate, and in the horseshoe downstairs has helped us recover. In the first year, we reduced the structural deficit by two-thirds. In the second year, we eliminated it and earned the faith of the voters to give us short-term increases. This year, we continue that commitment to discipline, but we do it in a way that invests in the aspirations of all Californians. If you look at the result of that, and people talk about using market-based approaches and whether or not we're adequately dealing with a wall of debt, we are. There's always more we could do. But the starkest contrast between the January budget proposal and the May budget revise was a $480 million reduction in the cost of financing the state's debt. Why? Because of the decisions that the majority parties made over the last several years to make necessary but painful cuts, the decisions we made to pass responsible budgets that resulted in the improvement of our credit rating consistently across the board, in contrast to the results of the dithering in Washington, which has resulted in a downgrading of the federal credit worthiness, and the real investments we've made in smart approaches. When people talk about pension obligations, it was the majority's party that stood up and made historic pension reform that others said either went too far or didn't go far enough. But again, it's easy to say no. The hard work is governing. I invite my colleagues on the other side to join us in the process of governing. There's been questions about what Democrats would do with supermajorities. The answer is be the responsible governing party when others abdicate their responsibility. I ask for an I vote.